Hello, it's Jessica, and today I'm back with a fun card technique I'm calling Inverted Spotlight Coloring. And this is for the Possum Stamps Halloween card making series. Make sure to subscribe for tons of Halloween inspiration. Now my card isn't full on Halloween themed, but I'm using these adorable pumpkins from the Hay Pumpkin Stamp Set. And this set does have dies available, but I won't be using those today. The blue piece of paper that you see is a piece of masking paper. And I'll also be using a circle die from my stash and a piece of Nina 110 pound cardstock along with some Copics and Distress Oxide inks. I've cut a circle out of masking paper using the circle die. The Hey Pumpkin set has a couple of adorable sentiments plus a really cute image of pumpkins that are grouped together. I'm using all of the single pumpkin images for this card though. And I'm making my own pattern paper of pumpkins. I used up the rest of that masking paper that I die cut the circle from and I stamped the single pumpkins very quickly. And then, and then I fussy cut those out. I'll use those later on in the video when I do my ink blending to get that beautiful teal background color. I just wanted to get those out of the way first. For this, I'm going to start creating my pattern background. Starting at the top of the cardstock, I arranged the pumpkins using the Misty. Stamping those several times to get a nice black line. I am also using a Copic friendly ink for this. In this set you get five different sized and shaped pumpkins. They all have a little bit of a quirkiness to them. So it's really easy to arrange them so they look a little random. I'm leaving room between each one and stamping some that are straight up and some that are tilting to either the left or the right side. And after each stamping, I do clean those stamps off. I have a little chamois that I use and I clean those up. That way I don't get any ink transfer onto my background when I go to arrange and stamp more to fill my cardstock areas. Once I have my panel filled with cute pumpkins, I'm going to use the mask. And this is the circle mask. Now I haven't taken the backing paper off yet. I'm only using this right now to draw a circle in the middle of my cardstock using a pencil. I draw this pretty lightly, but you can see it better in person. You can't really see it on video too well. But here's a close up of that. And this is to start my inverted spotlight coloring. I'm going to color all the pumpkins that are located inside of this circle in orange. So this is going to be my guide for that. Like I said, I'm using a Copic friendly ink. These are the markers I'm using today. Well, part of them anyways. Here's a color chart if you want to screenshot for the future to use. I also have this chart in my post on my blog. The colors I'm using are R37, R05, Y38, and Y15. I used to use all of those markers for like that orange color except R37, but I kind of like adding that in more now because it deepens those shadow dark areas. So now this is kind of my go-to. I'm going to speed this up some and add some music, but before I edited all this and sped it up for you, this coloring of this little circle of pumpkins did take about 25 minutes to color, which I was kind of surprised at, but it is really nice to just get into the groove of coloring. You don't even realize the time has gotten away from you.
instances where I colored slightly outside of the lines. I use the ink blender to push or nudge that ink back over. Red is very prone to kind of bleeding out even if I did use 110 pound cardstock. And now in my excitement of how well this was turning out, I went ahead and I erased the circle lines without coloring in the stems of the pumpkins. But you'll see in the future of this video that that was okay and I made it work. One of my favorite colors to use with orange and red is teal. I love those colors together. I'll be using two Distress Oxide inks to fill in the color and the background, so outside of the circle. First, I need to place my circle mask, taking the backing off this time and laying it over and laying it over my colored pumpkins. This will protect my spotlight of coloring. Now I can take all those single pumpkin masks and start placing them over the background stamping. I want to keep those white for now. You could stamp and cut the amount of pumpkins you need for this, but I went ahead and used just the singles ink blended in sections. So what I mean by that is you could count how many pumpkins you need of each size and go ahead and stamp and fussy cut those out. That way your background is just filled with masked pumpkins, but I didn't feel a need to actually do that. It wasn't a lot of ink blending. So that's why I'm doing it in sections. And I'm just going to, and I'm reusing the pumpkin masks as I go. I started off with the Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink. In the areas that are the closest to the circle, then blend it in with Lucky Clover around the edges. Once I'm done with a section, I simply peel off that mask and place over the next same sized pumpkin. Now that my background is teal, I can lift off all those masks. I'm leaving those white pumpkins white, but to make them look a little more white, I'll use W3 and W0 Copic markers. This will add some shading to those. I also use those warm gray markers around the pumpkins in the center using the W3 first and then going over that line with a W0. That adds just a bit of depth to those really orange pumpkins. And I'm still sticking with the circle edge, just kind of following along with my coloring throughout all of this. And now I can remember to color in the stems, which at this point is really easy to see where to color because it basically I have given myself a good line to follow. I use G17 and G14 for the stems of those pumpkins. Since the Distress Oxide inks react so well with water, I go ahead and I tap out some clean water using the straw of a sprayer onto my background. I spray I also spray a small amount of water onto an acrylic block so that I can grab more water from there and tap that onto my ink blending and I can control where the water droplets go a little bit more. Some of the water does hit areas where there is no ink blending. It will all dry out and you won't be able to see those droplets. While that dries, let's go ahead and get some of those sentiments stamped, embossed, and cut. I'm using black cardstock, Versamark ink, and white embossing powder to stamp out two sentiments from the Hey Pumpkin stamp set. One of them says, Hey Pumpkin, which is perfect for this, and the other says, Thankful for you. Super cute and makes this more of a fall time card, but you could easily use more Halloween colors like purple and orange and green to up the Halloween fun. 
or if you have some really cute Halloween sentiments, go ahead and use those for this kind of technique. I fussy cut around the sentiment doing a bubble cut so you get a black bubble outline of those white words. I also mounted the black cardstock to a top fold A2 size card base and adhered my inverted spotlight colored pumpkins to that. So I don't have any dimension for this one. No foam tape or anything like that. I do like the black around the edges though and it really sets off those black sentiments and the black lines of those pumpkins. Now I can adhere the sentiments using some liquid glue and tweezers so that I get the perfect placement. I also couldn't help myself and added a few sequins around the sentiments from the Possum Stamps Dreamy Days sequins pack. So these are some really pretty iridescent white sequins. They also have flat white and a couple more clear white sequins too. And there you have it. A inverted spotlight colored background full of cute pumpkins. I can't wait to try this with a different stamp set and different color combinations and see what else I can come up with. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.